Measuring the central tendency of a group of numbers is one way to get valuable information out of a big set of data. Another, another uh, valuable calculation is to figure out what the dispersion of that data is, or in other words, what the, um, what the distance most of the values of the data are from zero. Um, that, that tells us how, how well we can actually trust any of, the, any of the information in that data set. If I wanted to find, um, say, the average income of an American, and the 10 Americans I chose uh, from different areas of the country all had an income within $1,000 of each other, then chances are I've done a relatively decent job of finding an average income. If out of those 10 people, one of them has an income that's 50 times what anybody else is, then chances are if I were to calculate the mean or the average of those incomes, the value I got wouldn't be a very good indicator of everybody's income because that one value really threw it off. So finding the overall uh, sort of trustability of a group of uh, calculations is something to be very valuable. And we call that calculation identifying the variance, the variance of a group of data. What I did for our example here is just pick out a bunch of numbers, 3, 6, 8, 4, 9, 5, 2, and 3, and I calculated the mean. So, I mean, this was, if I added all these up, I got a total of 40, and I divided that by the number of numbers, that was 8. So that gave me the value of 5 for the mean. One way to um, identify how trustable or how, how uh, likely these numbers are to represent a real average is to figure out how far each of these numbers is from the mean. So immediately I could just go through and just subtract them. I could take 3 minus 5, and that would give me a difference of negative 2. Uh, 6 minus 5 would give me a difference of 1. 8 has a difference of 3, negative 1, 4, 0, negative 3, negative 2. Now this value, these, this kind of group of values here, let me erase that 5 so I can confuse this later. This group of values here is interesting because it shows us you know, which numbers are closest to the mean, but it doesn't really have a whole lot of, of use directly because we don't really know how each of these values compares to how big the numbers themselves are. In other words, if I just gave you this list and I said, I picked out a whole bunch of numbers and these are how far each of the numbers are from the middle, you might say, wow, it looks like you did a great job. But comparing to the numbers I started with here, for instance, 9, if it's 4 units away from my average, it's almost double the average. And uh, whereas 0, this one here, this represents no distance from the average, it's right on the average. But this one over here, this one that's only 3 units away, it's almost, in fact, it's less than half of the average. So compared to the numbers I chose, they don't look like they're very close to the mean because you know the, the value difference may only be three or four units, but we're only talking about a biggest unit of nine. So these numbers don't necessarily tell us a whole lot about how much we can trust the, uh, the values in my set. So one thing we can do that, that makes that a little more obvious is to square the values. Because if I square these values, then the ones that are farthest away from the middle really get exaggerated. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I take each of these values here and just square them, negative 2 becomes 4, 1 stays 1, 3 becomes 9, negative 1 becomes 1, 4 jumps up to 16, 0 stays 0, negative 3 becomes 9, and negative 2 becomes 4. So these values here, these are the squares of the difference from the mean. Now these, in, these individual values actually tell us quite a bit more about the, the uh, importance of each individual unit or each individual entry in our initial set. The ones that were farthest away from center now have these huge values attached to them. 9 was pretty far away from our average or our mean of 5, and its value now is 16. Whereas 5, which was right on our mean, its value is 0, so it has a little tiny number. So now, just looking at the numbers, we can see the ones with little bitty variances are the ones that give us a better idea of what the mean of our, of our overall set is. If we then take these numbers and we find the average of them, then we find the average variance, or the average difference of a number from the center. So if we do that real quick, we get 9, 10, 14, 15, 31, 40, 44, right? So we get a total of 44, and if we divide that by 8, 8 times 5 is 40, so we get 5 and a half. Our variance, 
which is what this number represents, it's the square root of the average mean, our variance then tells us that these numbers here are all pretty close to the mean, that generally speaking this is a pretty trustable set of numbers as long as I recognize that this one that has a pretty big value is a little bit farther away from center than I want it to be.